This is fantastic. Thanks, Bert, for letting me come into your office. And are you sort of the senior member of the Cattaraugus County Bar Association? Yes, there's a uh, couple that are a little bit older than I am, but I'm, I'm among the oldest. Who are they? Who are the two older ones? Uh, Frank, Frank uh, Del Posta. Yep. Uh, and uh, Charlie Harrigan. Okay. Where is Frank now? Is he in Olean? No, Frank's always in Gwanda. Okay, that's right. Yep. Uh, and he's still in Gwanda. Charlie, Charlie's in the West Valley. Okay. Still practicing? Still going? The, yeah, they're still practicing. There's a couple older, I think, older who are retired. Yeah, like, uh, like who? Uh, Joe Dwyer. Right. Uh, and uh, uh, Art Hornberg just passed away. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was 90. Right, golly. Were you destined to be a lawyer? Was that something that was in your family? No, no, no. My, both my parents are teachers. My dad was a principal and my mother was a teacher. Uh, my brother ended up uh, as, a, as an attorney and uh, I probably am, uh, got into law because of him. What was uh, his name? Paul. Paul? Paul Rowe. Are you, are you a native of the area here? Yeah, I was born and raised in Dolan. What brought your mom and dad to here? Dolan? Yeah. Uh, a uh, job as a, yeah. as a principal. My dad came here as a principal in uh, 1931. 1931. So you were a high school graduate of uh, of Olean. Yes. What year did you graduate? 1950. 1950. 70 years. Oh, well, but yeah. but it was a nice celebration because of the pandemic. Uh, to be, it's an unrelated question, but do you remember December 7th, 1941? Yes. What do you remember about that? Uh, we'd been to church and came home, and uh, then uh, uh, I think I was playing outside, and then we were talking about it. My dad uh, uh, and, my, and my brother and a friend of his yeah, took us inside, and he had a globe and showed us where we were and where Hawaii was and where Japan was. Those, that's about all I remember. I was, I was uh, eight years old. Eight years old. Do you remember, was there much scuttlebutt in the community when here you'd been attacked and uh, were there older students maybe in high school that were starting to get drafted? Do you remember much about that wartime period? Not, not, well, I, I remember the war, not, not immediately then, but yes, the war was kind of all-consuming uh, during the next four years till yeah. it ended, yeah. Did you live on rations? Was that part of your world? Yes. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, they had uh, tokens and coupons. Tokens for, I think, one call was for meat and the other was for something else. And uh, you could take grease, buck grease, and take it back to the supermarket and they would pay uh, something like two cents a pound. Mm. And, uh, uh, and you got a token. So I, uh, my source of income was I would collect the uh, grease from the neighbors, and I got the I got the pennies, and they got the uh, coupons. <laughs> my mother and a few of the neighbors. I suspect it was my mother that set up. I don't think I was enterprising enough to do it on my own. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I remember I recall doing that. Do you remember was there uh, uh, there were every community was not immune from losses, you know, kids who were killed in the war. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have recollections of that being in the community where somebody passed away and the reaction of it? Yes. A uh, uh, neighbor about five or six houses up uh, was killed. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, wasn't a kid, I was a married man. Mm -hmm. and I can remember the, going from the uh, Blue Star to the Gold Star. Everybody had, if you had somebody in the service, you had a Blue Star uh, in the window. Uh, and then went to a gold who were, were killed. Now you had an older brother, did you have, were they any of those war eligible or draft no. eligible? No. no, my brother graduated from high school in uh, 1945. Okay. He it. And he was young when he graduated, he was 16 when he graduated, so he wouldn't have been draft, drafted for a year or two. So you're a 1950 graduate of Olean High School. Uh, were you draft eligible for Korea? Uh, yes, but I was deferred okay. uh, because I was in college. 
and I went into service uh, after I got out of law school. Okay. I was JAG. Okay. And so you went just to fill out the biography. You went. Where did you go to college? Uh, actually, I started out in uh, Fredonia mm -hmm. uh, for two years, and then uh, I decided I wanted to go to law. Uh, I was in the Albany Pharmacy School. My brother was in law school, and I was living with him. That's probably the reason I switched <laughs> to law. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably the thing that happened there. And uh, then I went to one year. Uh, I think I misspoke. I said, well, I said I started at Perdonia. I started at Albany Pharmacy. I was two years there. Then I went to Perdonia okay, for it. one more year. I, I don't have an undergraduate degree. Got it. And then from there, you went to law school? Albany Law School. Albany Law School. A place of Robert Jackson. Yes. <laughs> uh, and so then in law school, was there an aha moment that you might come back to the area? No. No. Uh, that that happened about uh, quite a bit later, actually. I, I when I got out of law school, I went to work for the Glen Falls Insurance Company, the private insurance company at that time, mm -hmm. uh, in Glen Falls. But I knew I was going to go into service, so then I went into the, the three years of service. I went back to the uh, insurance company, and then I worked uh, as a lawyer looking to retire, also a law graduate, <laughs> looking to retire. And so I joined him in uh, uh, practice in a small, very small town in Delaware County. Uh, and then it, it, uh, that actually worked out as far as I was concerned, but uh, my wife was not happy in the little town, so uh, that's why I came back to Oregon and, and uh, opened my own practice there. Just before that, you were in the service, you mentioned you were a JAG. Yeah. What, what was your role there as a JAG? Uh, the base I was at didn't have a lot of uh, criminal justice. We we processed claims and uh, contracts. It, it was uh, the Air, Air, AMC Air Material Command, and uh, well, I did do some <laughs> court martial, what, what court martials there were. I did. Now this was the was it the Air Force? Yes. Air Force. Uh, and what years was that, Bert? Uh, Nineteen uh, fifty-seven through sixty. Got it. Got it. And so then you're in Delaware County, small law firm, and your wife says, let's go back home. No, I uh, wasn't back home for her. She was actually, she was about uh, 15 miles away from where that was. <laughs> she was she was in her home. But, uh, I uh, looked around, needed something to do, and I didn't find any uh, uh, position. So I figured I'm going to open my own practice, I'll do it where I am known. Okay. My name is known at least, but my father was very well known in the city. I taught a lot of people in school. Sure. Uh, so I opened up a, uh, my own practice in, in uh, Olean, and about three years later, 1970, uh, I came here. So as a practice, how, did, how does one open up his own practice back at that time period to just hang, literally hang a sh shingle and Yep. So, uh, say I'm open for business? Yeah. You were allowed, you couldn't do any advertising so much if you were allowed to announce that you were open in an office, and I did that. And it was word of mouth. I probably had a few friends, and that came to me. General practice? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then at some point, you here you are, we're in an office of uh, Congdon, Perot, um, and Dole. Uh, how did that happen? Uh, Actually, as soon as I came back and established myself, Ben, ben Perot uh, happened to be in law school when I was. I really didn't know him. Uh, he was a year behind me, and, and uh, I knew he was. He was the other guy from Cattaraugus County. Right. <laughs> uh, but uh, and there's a picture here of Ben? Yes. Yeah. Ooh. And uh, so you, you guys got to meet over yeah. lunch someday? And yeah. Yeah. yeah, they they were uh, looking for someone. Uh, to do real estate, and I had done quite a bit of real estate in, in uh, Delaware County, and and uh, was doing about the only thing I was about to do was real estate in uh, Holy Land, mm -hmm. and so I came down here. Actually, I had never moved out of the Holy Land area. I okay. still live in, in Allegheny. I live in Holy Land most of the time. I was here about uh, five years ago. I moved from the city of Holy Land to a trailer court, uh, a bottom mobile home in Trailer Park. 
Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the individuals who was part of the firm then in 1970, and what what were they doing? Uh, I did a lot of real estate. Ben Perot did a lot of uh, appropriations work. The, 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 the uh, in connection with the, taking the building of the Kinzu Dam and so uh -huh. forth. He had done a lot of that and appropriation for the highways and so forth. So we, he was doing a lot of that. And we did a lot of real estate uh, downstairs and that's part of the uh, early history of the firm is that Sal Mike, a trust company, uh, was downstairs. We represented them and there was a savings and loan association down, uh, down uh, it's now the Historical Society building. Uh, we represented them, so we did the And when I came here, I primarily I did all real estate, nothing right. but real estate. And uh, was the Congdon, Congdon Perot, who was the Congdon? Uh, the Congdon at that time was Charles Scott. Okay. And what, what's, what's his background? Uh, his father, whose uh, picture's over there, uh, uh, Benjamin uh, uh, Congdon, uh, and a brother, Joseph Condon, were admitted to practice in 1870. They went to all the law, law okay. school also, and not too many went to law school in those days. Yeah. Uh, and he was uh, practiced in uh, Randolph. And the, the firm founding was another, James Johnson, whose picture is there, uh, was uh, uh, a lawyer in Randolph. Mm. And his father-in-law, uh, in 1881, uh, I think the First National Bank had been opened a year earlier than Salmax. Salmax was just beginning to boom by the railroad. And uh, uh, so he, uh, his father-in-law founded a bank uh, down on, on the corner, which now the building is now the Historical Society. And uh, 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 Johnson maintained his practice in uh, Randolph took the train in in the morning, went back in the afternoon, probably not every day to begin with, and had an office in that building. Mm -hmm. He was the founder of the firm. Uh, Charles Congdon, uh, who uh, joined him, was admitted in 1902. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when he went in, some time in the mid-30s, the bank moved up into this building. This, this, this building had been a hardware store, uh, and it was, it was open. Uh, the bank uh, remodeled and so forth, and the firm moved up here. And and Charles' son, Richard Congdon, uh, was uh, graduated from law school probably around 1940, 39 or 40. Mm -hmm. And he went. He was in World War II. Was a ski trooper World War II. Uh, he was one of the founders of uh, Pauley Valley. Ah. Uh, I, 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 maybe I didn't mention, but when I came here, it was both Charles Condon, Richard Condon, and Ben Perot. Ah, okay. Got it. And this young kid called Bert Dole. Yeah. Okay. Well, Ben and I were about the same age. Okay, got it. Got it. And I was, uh, I'll say, 1970, so I was. Uh, do my math, but 44? Yeah, yeah. I got it. Uh, what did they do? They So Ben did a lot of the appropriation yeah. stuff, and you were doing all the real estate work, and the Congdons have a certain niche? Yeah, well, uh, Dick Condon was uh, in banking quite a bit. He was uh, actually, at that time, I think he was chairman of the board of the Cellar Trust, which has now been acquired by... by uh, Five star, yeah. yeah, for quite a long time ago, and uh, that's primarily what what, uh, what he did in, in business. Uh, represented some of the businesses of town and so forth. He did that type of work. Uh, ben did it when he first started practicing law. Did kind of a little bit of everything, just so he would, but matrimonial and right. and. Uh, uh, negligence and so forth, but uh, primarily we didn't do any of that. And I you are in Indian Territory. So, yes, and right I now we are. <laughs> you are. And uh, I know from my experience, and I've been at this for almost, well, over 40 years, the go-to guy when it came to understanding Indian rights, ground leases, 
peppercorn was bird dole. You ca I would call you and you'd say, hey, can you explain this, how this really works? Because it's different. How did you come to understand this relationship here where the land, a lot of the land is owned, still owned by the Indians and you have this lease relationship? Yeah. Uh, actually, I, I learned it from D Dick Condon and, and uh, Ben Perot, uh, and probably if you were calling me, I was asking them if I couldn't answer the question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were bar better at it than I was. Now, my, my partner, Tom Rickard, is well, well yeah, versed, yeah. but uh, currently it's just Tom and I in the firm. Yeah. Yeah. It Charles Condon was uh, born in 1877, so when I came here, he was 92. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Just did you get a sense? I mean, here you are doing the real estate, and again, the property is owned by the reservation. They had 99 year leases, and then that sort of expired uh, not that long ago in the scheme of things. Were you part of any of the negotiations that went on, you know, local attorney and trying to figure out the extension of time and how that all would settle out? Yeah, I, I was on the. Uh, uh Lease, lease committee, South America Lease Committee. Okay. Uh, Dave Franz uh, from OAN was the attorney for them, and, and he, he did much of the legal work out of that. But I was a member of the, of the committee. Can you talk? We negotiated. Little, yeah, can you talk a little bit about some of the discussion points and maybe tension points there were? Uh, you're going back quite a while. It's ninety-two. Um, uh, obviously, the, whether, whether to extend the leases or not, there was an issue whether they were renewable or not. Uh, there was a lot of, of uh, uh, friction in the community itself. Some of them thought they would be able to negotiate their own leases, uh, and there was a group that held out. Some of them actually lost their, their homes because, mm. they, because they were not signed new leases. Not very many, just a handful, eight or ten. Uh, the uh, question was how long and, and the amount of the rent. Uh, the federal government did, did uh, put quite a bit of money into it to, to reach a settlement. What is, the, what is the deal now? If I wanted to buy a piece of property here on the reservation, I really am buying a ground lease. Right. And normally do they extend that so when I buy it, how long do they extend it to? What's the term? What well, are the, the leases were were for, uh, forty year leases okay. from uh, the expiration of the early ones in ninety two, okay. with the right to renew for forty more. Ah, okay. And, and so that's what you'd be buying. And the nation, I think, has has been uh, where people wanted it for financing. Is uh, they amended it to extend the the forty right now. Okay. So and the bank, it's all bankable. The banks will will take that. That's yeah. not an issue. So when you do a mortgage, uh, the bank does a mortgage. Does the the nation sign then the mortgage as well? Uh, I haven't been doing the real estate lately. Tom has been doing it, but yeah, they have to notify the nation, uh, nation that you're doing it, and they uh, uh, are aware of it. There's, okay. a, there's a joint leasing committee that handles issues. Tom is on that. And, uh, and but you had to have to uh, notify the nation and get them copies of documents and so forth. So Tom, I know Tom. I see his name a lot. Is he in a kind of a? Is there a tribal commission? Is there a, a sort of governing body that? There's a joint leasing commission. Uh, okay. Uh, that's made composed of. I'm not sure how many, are, but uh, equal represent equal rep representatives from the nation permanent by nation and by the city and then there's, uh, there's one pointed by those in Thomas that one he's the uh, for two good for trigger to own the both the nation and the city respect his impartiality and intelligence judgment yeah well it's always been we're just sec not that far away in Chautauqua County but it's always been a mystery and uh, I know every time we stumble onto it and it's not that much we have to seek help we have to seek your, your calls the way back when and Tom more recently. Uh, when I opened my office in Olean, I was concerned what I'd do if I had a uh, uh, transaction in Salamanca 
And uh, I mentioned Art Hornberg, who I knew growing up, was a long time friend of mine, uh, who did a lot of real estate. He was a, one of the larger firms in only a five, six man firm. And I asked him, what do you do? He said, I've never had one. I said, well, if you haven't had one all the years you've been here, I guess I don't have to worry. <laughs> so I, but I learned about it after I came here. Well, uh, as you live here and you became such a part of the community, did you get involved in the municipal side of it? Did you get involved in the corporation council for any of the municipalities? Was that part of your practice? No. No? Just as not, well? Not, not me individually, yeah, but yeah. Uh, 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 Tom uh, is represented in some of the towns. Actually, right now I'm town prosecutor for the town of Allegheny uh, traffic practice. But town of where? The, uh, the, uh, the assistant the district attorney's office does not prosecute traffic infractions, so the individual towns hire their own attorney to prosecute uh -huh. traffic infractions okay. in this county, and I'm representing the town of Malagany for oh. I don't know, eight or ten years. So when all those St. Bonaventure kids are run, move, driving too fast through uh, the Allegheny, you're, you're the guy that has to prosecute it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Back before I, I, when I was in Olean, I was a part-time assistant district attorney. Okay. Uh, the district attorney was part-time at that time, okay. and there were two part-time assistants. So talk about that time period. I know most attorneys, that's how they cut their uh, teeth early on, is to become uh, either in the public defender's office or a district attorney's office. Uh, what did you learn during that time period, you know, being in court? Uh... I'm not sure what you mean. I learned some criminal law, yeah, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 was, I really liked prosecuting more than I liked defending. Because right, right. uh, if you're prosecuting, uh, you can do what's right. Uh, if you're defending, you've got an obligation. And I don't mean to malign. It's certainly a good thing that there are defense attorneys who do represent their attorneys. And I, think, I believe that everybody's entitled to a sure. defense. Was there a case or two that comes to mind saying, Greg, you know me only as a real estate attorney, but let me tell you, when I did some uh, prosecuting, that was kind of an uh, unusual one. Uh, probably a lot of them, but I don't, uh, nothing's coming to mind particularly. Yeah. Did, was students on St. Bonaventure, where it was, that's the big first yeah. uh, university here. Uh, w did you ever run it? I mean, was that an issue where there, Students being students, kids being kids, you know, where you kind of ran across that stuff? Well, actually, uh, you mentioned a case, one particular case was the, the uh, SDS, Students for Democratic Society, yeah. Society or something of that nature. Uh, they picketed at a school up in Hinsdale, and I prosecuted that. That was an interesting case. Was it controversial? Uh, not really as far as the community was concerned. I don't think so. I think the community was pretty well in favor. The school had uh, had fired a, a teacher uh, who was teaching a book, a book they told him not to teach. Uh, okay. <laughs> it was considered, I can't remember which one it was, it was considered him improper. And so they were picketing. It was a prohibition against being on school ground. An interesting part of that case was, was uh, um, couple aspects. Uh, one of the teachers who was testifying, uh, uh, the, a, the, uh, the, the kids were represented by an attorney from the ACLU of Buffalo, uh, and he was cross-examined and he said, how do you know that they were on the school property? Are you sure that they were on the school property? And he said, yes. He said, how do you know? He says, I'm a licensed surveyor and I've surveyed the zoo. <laughs> Just by coincidence, he did mass at school, but he was a licensed surveyor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's not going to happen very often. No, 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 no exactly. No, you're not. You're, you're absolutely right. That's right. Uh, was there somebody when you came back to Olean and it was your uh, pra as sole practice? Was the sort of a mentor to you, Bert? Somebody you picked up the phone and call and say, "How do you do this stuff?" Uh, yes, actually. Uh, uh, and it was, I was my office was in, then the Exchange Bank. It's now bank, uh, now Community Bank, uh, with Bob Murren. Mm -hmm. And uh, then shortly after I came back, uh, 
Tony DeRose, who had an office in the, the Masonic Temple, uh, and they were longtime friends. They formed a firm, and they were very helpful to me. And Tony had done a lot of criminal work. Okay. Yeah, they were, they were very helpful for me. You mentioned Ben earlier uh, was involved in some of the appropriation work with the Kinzu Dam. Yes. Was the, did you get a sense of the controversy regarding that whole time period when there was Ben would have been taking property, I assume, on behalf of the federal government? No, he he represented the claimants. Oh, okay. So yeah. he, he was representing the Native Americans. So, what, what was that all? What was that like? Uh. I didn't get involved in it uh, too much, except when he died rather suddenly. We, Tom and I ended up a couple of cases he was handling. Um, Tom had worked with him, so he was familiar, uh, somewhat familiar with it. I had not particular familiarity with that phase of the law. And they were doing, the, at the same time, they were doing the highway appropriations. He was, but he always represented uh, uh, property owners whose property was being taken. Yeah. And a number of them were, of course, under Canadian. Was the Kinzu time, was at the time the government took over the, in Warren, you know, built the dam, et cetera, and of course it affected this area. Uh, was it still an active conversation? You know, what did you? Well, when I came back, it was pretty well taken. Uh, the land was pretty well taken when I joined the firm here. Yeah. So there wasn't a lot of, it was a fait accompli at that time. Well, yeah, the, uh, there's still some, I think, feeling among the Native Americans that, right. that under, understandably, that it was taken from them. Yeah. Um, you practiced law for, gosh. Uh, I was admitted in, in 56. 56. Uh, hesitate to do the math, but it's a lot of years. 64. <laughs> <laughs> During that time period, uh, were there some incidents or maybe cost clients of yours that were sort of characters guys that you'd say you know I, we all had them uh and some people you'd say well i'm not going to give you the name but here's here's the kind of guy that was uh, just curious whether you had a clients or two you'd say greg you're not you know you're not going to believe these guys uh but, but i'm not going to well you could, you could they're not going to talk and tell stories about uh, you know, uh, some individuals, again, you don't have to mention their names, but uh, that uh, were uh, either fun to deal with or unique or, you know. Uh, well, again, without mentioning names, I, I, recent years I've been doing a lot of representing children in family court. Ah. Uh, and uh, uh, the, there was a man who's been was charged with uh, abuse of his children. He had temper. And he uh, and he had was, was instructed to go to uh, anger management, and the judge was he didn't have an attorney. The judge was calmly explaining to him that he uh, had to go to anger management school, and in the middle of the judge's ex calmly explaining, he jumped up, slammed his fist on the table, and said, "I don't need anger management." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, perfect. And the stenographer has a hard time, you know, memorializing all of that activity. Uh, one of the attorneys thought he ought to be marked exhibit A. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's a really good point. You were, you, we all were uh, exposed to being guardians for children, family court, and sometimes that's very contentious, very yeah, emotional. Yeah. Uh, did you ever find an instance in court where, uh, like that perhaps, where it got emotional, where all of a sudden, the decorum of the cust the particular clients got out of control. Yeah, some that's the case. Yeah, yeah, and that's a problem for the judge. Yeah. Uh, I think the the judge in that particular instance, his problem was keeping from keeping a straight face when the guy <laughs> jumped up. <laughs> Were there? And there probably wasn't security back then, was there? Uh, the, yeah, there's been security in, in family court as long as I've been involved okay. in the, the uh, uh, sheriff's office. Yeah. Now, now it's it's heightened. You know, there's, when you go into court, no. it's, yeah. they're everywhere. Uh, having practiced for so many years, uh, 
if you had to advise somebody, somebody came in and wanted to join your firm and he's 30 years old, kind of, what advice might you give him, Bert? Well, I, th I think a lot of lawyers, I've heard say, don't practice law, but uh, uh, it's been good to me. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I like it because I'm still doing it. And I plan on doing it till I can, till uh, a higher authority says no more. Yeah. <laughs> you were born when, Bert? What's your birthday? August 7th, 1933. 1933? Yeah. Yep. Uh, you're great. I mean, you look fabulous, you know. And uh, feeling good? Yes. Yeah. Come to work every day? Yes. Yeah. Since they've allowed it. <laughs> and uh, well, I, I'm just thrilled. Uh, when you knew I was coming down yesterday, uh, was there a question or two you'd say, gee, I wonder if Greg's going to ask that question that I haven't? No, I don't think so. Yeah. I just. And really not sure what you're going to ask. Actually, I did see you interview, uh, uh, well, another time in, at Jackson Center, but also when uh, Woodward yes. was in Jamestown. I, I, we were, my daughter, two daughters and I were there, and uh, that was, you did an excellent job there. Thank you. Well, it's Bob, Bob Woodward and Bert Dole. Now <laughs> that's on my resume. <laughs> well, this is big. More, much more famous. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Well, it's fun. It, it's good, uh, and, and what I've been doing this for just the, the uh, is uh, it's history. First of all, it's history. Mm -hmm. It's bar association, and everybody has a story. You got a story. You you may not think you have a story. Most people say, "I have nothing to add." Mm -hmm. Well, the reality you do. You have a, you have a legacy, and uh, that's what I want to capture. And I've been doing that in Chautauqua County. I I certainly hope you've interviewed Judge Jurassi. <laughs> I have. I have interviewed Judge Jurassi. He was a classmate of my brothers in law school. Oh, is that right? When you were at Albany, I don't know, this is the question, it's too obvious, I didn't even ask. Was the name Jackson at all a fact? Was he even mentioned? Yes. In, in what context? Uh, well, now I think there's some programs and so forth. I don't know at that time, but it was well known that he, he was known, of course. It was after the. Uh, I was there for 10 years, I guess, after the uh, Nuremberg trials and after he was on the bench. I'm not sure when did he passed away on the 54, bench. 54, 1954. Yeah. Oh, so he was, he, he, he was still on the bench then when I was there. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just curious whether when, when he died, whether there was anything, do you remember any sort of memorial when you were at the Albany Law School recognizing his passing? I, I was aware of it and talked about it, but, but I'm not sure. That I don't recall any specific. There may have been some. Yeah. But a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look, you look fabulous. Great. So thank you. Thank you, Bert, for, for letting me pop in.